there seems to be some drama here with the 49ers as of late. And um, as far as I can tell, either Debo Samuel is upset with the 49ers or he wants people to believe he's upset with the 49ers by not clarifying exactly what his feelings are. He's been in the league three years as a second round pick in 2019. He is now for the first off season eligible for a contract extension and he should get it because he is grossly underpaid, but it certainly seems as if this off season is not proceeding like he wants it to. Yeah. There was such, I guess, angst on social media. A lot of fans were very surprised. He took all of his 49ers pictures off of his social media, off of Instagram, off of Twitter. And that always makes everybody a little nervous. So with no pictures of anything 49ers, there's always, and he unfollowed them as well. It's a passive aggressive kind of thing to take all of the 49ers stuff out. He's not gonna do anything direct. He's not gonna bad mouth the 49ers or Kyle. I think that this was kind of a way to, it's unsubtle to all of us, but subtly say that, you know, they're not everything's everything's not okay. There's some issues going on. I don't think the 49ers would reach out to teams about a trade, but I do think they would listen. At the time the 49ers traded DeForest Buckner, he was the best player on their team. And so that precedent has been set. Like they will trade a player that they believe is top notch and the kind of guy you want to build around. So yeah, you just kind of wonder, you know, wh where this is. And we're not trying to like stir things up or, or sound the alarms, but I, I think Debo Samuel has sounded an alarm that not all is great in his mind. 49ers want Debo Samuel. Obviously the fan base wants Debo Samuel. I guess the conversation, and it's a legitimate conversation, you know, how much is too much to pay a wide receiver? If you can get any number of draft picks back for a wide receiver, would you do it? But I, I, I would be absolutely shocked if some team came to the table with an offer that the 49ers couldn't refuse because it's Debo Samuel and they could refuse a big price and still feel good about what he brings to the table. So personally, I, I think I'm back to where I was a week and a half ago. Uh, it's not happening. I'd be shocked if the 49ers traded Debo Samuel. I agree with you. I think it's going to get done. I don't think that it's going to get done immediately. I think it'll be kind of similar to where George Kittle, that timeline, same thing with Fred Warner. It'll get done eventually, but I think it's going to take a little while. And he could be like Jalen Ramsey, right? He could hold in as opposed to hold out. He could show up for training camp until it gets done, not necessarily practice, but show that his, you know, he's there. If there's an allegiance there, he's being patient, but not necessarily practice because obviously you don't want to get injured in practice at that point when you are holding out or waiting for a contract. Well, you know? Yeah, I, boy, that, that would be out of character, it seemed to me, for Debo Samuel to, to show up and not play. And you talked about a hold in that's kind of what teams or i should say players are doing now because of the the cba it just doesn't make financial sense for them for players with contracts as debo samuel has fourth year of a contract to hold out because uh the, the penalty is is much too great the d ford contract you know that 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 leaves a mark for the 49ers because you know they got him in that trade and they were expecting him to kind of help push that defense over the top. And I, I keep remembering that 2019 season when he was going through his quad issues and knee and and trying to get healthy. And, and Robert Sala kept saying that he's the guy who unlocks that defense. Well, he was never healthy. You know, at first it was the, the leg issue. He had the offseason surgery after 2019, expected to come back better than ever in 2020. And then he had the back condition. So there was just so much going on with him. And I mean, when it comes, when everything plays out, they will have paid him $42 million and he only played in 21 games. And that's including the postseason. So that is a large sum of money 
uh, for somebody who just basically sat on the roster and, and wasn't able to contribute. Trey Lance is is down in Southern California, putting in a lot of work this offseason with some of the 49ers wide receivers, minus Debo Samuel. He's in, I believe, Huntington Beach with 3DQB. And John Beck is the guy that he's worked with before. He worked with him before the combine, before the draft. All four of those guys down there. And yeah, I think it's going to be great for him. Kyle Shanahan spoke at the owners meetings, annual meetings, about how important these nine practices for Trey Lance are. Mm -hmm. And if he can get a head start on them by getting chemistry with his primary targets, it's only going to benefit him in the long run. What's interesting last year with Trey Lance, remember in training camp, Everybody was down on the 49ers wide receivers because they couldn't catch a pass. <laughs> Remember that? And it was during uh, the first couple exhibition games where, you know, balls are just glancing off guys' hands and they couldn't, it, there were so many drops. Because he throws a ball with such great velocity, it takes the wide receivers, and I realize they get paid to catch the football, but it's not easy. It's something that they kind of have to acclimate to just catching those balls from Trey Lance. So it's very good that he is you know, working out with those guys. And there's a little difference in how quick of a release Jimmy Garoppolo has versus Trey Lance's release. So if they're watching him, again, watching his body language versus Jimmy Garoppolo's body language, completely different. And we saw it when Colin Kaepernick was the quarterback of the 49ers too. When he threw the ball, he had so much arm strength that it would hit the guys in the hands so much harder. You could hear it. You could hear the sound of the ball hitting their gloves. And I think it was Anquan Bolton talked about how sometimes his hands would be sore because of how hard the ball came out. So it's just guys getting used to each other. And I think, yeah, these extra sessions are gonna be very valuable to all of them in the long run.